Let's now plot these fractions on a number line. Some of them are negative. But first of all, one eighth. My number line just has tick marks at every whole number. So to plot one eighth, I would have to take this here and divide it into eight parts, right? But first into halves, and then into fourths, and then, okay, it would be the halfway point between zero and one fourth. This here is one eighth. Negative one eighth. It will be on the other side of zero, but equally far away as one eighth is. It's right there. It's like a mirror point, okay, for one eighth. But you can also think of it, you can divide this number line into halves and fourths and then into eighths. Negative five eighths. Okay, let me divide this into eighths now. Now I have divided the interval from zero to negative one into eight parts. And then I travel to negative five eighths. You know, if I had, if I travel to positive five eighths, I go this way. Now I just go this way, five eighths. One, two, three, four, five. There would be negative five eighths. One and a half. Okay, that's on the positive side. It's between one and two, halfway in between. One and a half. That's easy. Negative one and three fourths. Okay, that is past negative one. It's between negative one and negative two. Just like one and three fourths would be here, it's on the opposite side. Okay, as if mirrored. And let me divide this into four parts here. So I go to negative one and then three fourths further. Right there is negative one and three fourths. And let's do the same with these decimal numbers. Again, I have the same kind of number line. This one here is negative two tenths. Well, it's actually a fraction, two tenths. So this here needs divided into 10 parts and then we go to two tenths towards negative one from zero over here. This is negative two tenths. 0 0.23. That's a little bit past 2 tenths on the number line. So I would have to first divide this into 10 parts. And then, actually to be exact, I would need to divide it into 100 parts and then go to 23 hundredths. But I can't easily do that, so I'll just go to 2 tenths here and a little bit further. There would be 23 hundredths. Okay? Negative 1.8. Okay, that I would go to negative 1 and then 8 tenths further, somewhere there. Okay, you would again divide this into 10 parts first. Then go to the 8th tenth here. It's near negative 2. Negative 2.05 is just a little bit, a little tad be beyond negative 2 over there. And then 0 0.92 is clear, it's a little bit past 0 0.9 over here, 0 0.92. Lastly, what we're going to look at is changing fractions to decimals. Okay, these are rational numbers, every fraction is a, de is a rational number, but often we want to express them as decimals. And you already know a lot of this. For example, one fourth, how do you express that as a decimal? Maybe you remember that one fourth it's a quarter, and then a quarter of a dollar is 25 cents. Or maybe you want to use equivalent fractions and write it as 25 hundredths. Either way, we get 0 0.25 as a decimal. Negative 7 over 20. Use the same technique. We will write it as an equivalent fraction with denominator 100. It's negative. Okay, 20 goes 5 times to 100. So 7 times 5, 35, and now it is negative 0 0.35. This one here, okay, this does not, 3 does not go evenly into 100 or 1000 or anything. But if you remember, 1 third was 0 0.33333, 2 thirds is 0 0.66666, repeating with 6s. So this ends up being negative 1.666 repeating 60s or negative 
six with a bar on top to indicate the repeating part. And of course, for most fractions, we cannot use something that we maybe remember or use equivalent fractions. No, we need to use this division, either with a calculator or long division. This is one of them that you most likely will not use division. And so you use long division this way, just write 5 divided by 16. Remember, 5 is what you're dividing. 5 goes inside this little corner, long division corner. And then you're going to have a decimal, so put some decimal zeros here, anticipating a decimal number. And then 16 goes to 5, 0 times, and to 50, 3 times. I'm sorry, 48 here. Okay, we get 20, goes once, then we get 40, it goes 2 times. And then we get 80. Oh, it goes even. 5 times 16 is 80. So, this is just a negative decimal number. There it is. 13 over 12. Let's try the same thing. It's 13. We are dividing by 12. Again, just put lots of decimal zeros. We don't know if it's going to terminate like this one or if the division is at some point going to become even or if it's just going to be a division that continues indefinitely, the decimal continues indefinitely. 12 goes to 13 once, to 10, 0 times, to 100, 8 times, and then to 40, 3 times, again to 40, 3 times. Okay, now it's going to repeat, because I see this 40 and 36 here, the remainder is repeating. 40 and 36, etc. And 3 is going to repeat here. So my decimal point here. So I get 1.08. Three. Threes are repeating, so I put this bar over the 3. Threes are going to repeat. The 8 will not repeat, not a 0. So this is a non ending repeating decimal. And whenever you are changing a fraction into a decimal, you either will get a decimal that terminates, like that, like that. Or you get a decimal that repeats something. It might even repeat several digits, not just one. And, like I mentioned, there are decimal numbers that are not rational. There are decimal numbers that don't repeat, but still go on indefinitely, without any repeating pattern in their digits. And those are irrational numbers. So there exist numbers that are not rational. But that would be a topic of another lesson. Okay, I hope this was helpful.